Okay, hi King of Dog. Thanks for posting your video. Uh, for those who don't know, Crocodile and I are having a debate about the Big Bang. I am holding the position that there are good reasons to be a skeptic about the Big Bang theory, and of course, King Crocodile is against this position. So, King Crocodile, basically, in your last video, you said that one incorrect prediction is enough to falsify the Big Bang theory. What prediction is enough to drop the Big Bang theory? Well, I can think of many incorrect predictions. For example, magnetic monopole. The Big Bang theory predicts magnetic monopole, but we don't find magnetic monopole. So, there is an incorrect prediction there. Uh, the Big Bang predicts something, we didn't find that something, therefore the prediction is wrong. The Big Bang is making wrong predictions. Incorrect prediction number two, the universe is flat or nearly flat. The, uni the Big Bang Theory predicts a cube universe. Incorrect prediction number three, this has to do with cosmic microwave radiation. The Big Bang Theory predicts a lack of homology in the temperature of the cosmic microwave radiation, but we do find homology in the cosmic microwave radiation. In the context of the Big Bang, I mean, according to the Big Bang model, uh, 14 billion years is not enough to reach thermal, thermal equilibrium. So, you also have kind of like a problem there because, I mean, in your last video you said that there's nothing older than the universe. Well, apparently the cosmic microwave radiations are older than the universe. Unless, of course, the Big Bang theory is wrong, of course. So, that's an incorrect prediction, and you require an explanation for that, and it has to be a testable and falsifiable explanation. Incorrect prediction number four, the Big Bang Theory predicts the same amount of matter and antimatter. In your last video, you said that the antimatter must be somewhere in the hidden in the universe. Well, I mean, you can believe that if you want, but that's an act of faith. I mean, if you want to believe that there is antimatter somewhere hidden in the universe, you are welcome to believe that, but you cannot call it science. That will be an act of faith. And you cannot blame me for being a skeptic about that claim. I mean, honestly, how would you feel if, as a creationist, I say something that, like, there are rabbits in the Precambrian somewhere in the planet, but we haven't found any yet, but there must be somewhere hidden in the planet. I mean, will that answer satisfy, satisfy you? I mean, would you feel convinced with that answer? Of course not. So, why are you expecting people to be accepting your explanation? I mean, antimatter is somewhere in the universe. I mean, we cannot, we don't know where, where, where is it, but it must be somewhere. I mean, that's an act of faith. I mean, honestly, is that the best thing you can do? Uh, there is too much lithium in the universe. So, in, in your last video, you said that there is the exact amount of helium and hydrogen as predicted in the Big Bang Theory. Okay? Uh, I disagree, but let's assume that that's true. What about lithium? Uh, the Big Bang Theory also predicts a certain amount of lithium, and there is much more lithium than predicted by the Big Bang Theory. There is hundreds of times more lithium that what the Big Bang Theory predicts. So, there's another wrong prediction there. Uh, okay, uh, there is redshift, the universe is expanding, uh, but there's a problem. Uh, the, Big Bang the Big Bang predicts a deaccelerated expansion, and we see an accelerated expansion. So, even though the universe is expanding, the universe is not expanding according to what the Big Bang Theory predicts. You have to invent a new force called dark energy to explain this acceleration of the universe. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing against the existence of dark energy. In fact, I do believe in dark energy. I think there is clear evidence that there is dark energy. But the problem is that the expansion of the universe can be explained with dark energy itself. We don't need the Big Bang to explain the expansion of the universe, because expansion can be explained with dark energy itself. 
Maybe the universe was created yesterday with dark energy. Given this scenario, we would expect to find redshift and we would expect to find mi cosmic microwave radiation. So, I mean, if the universe was created yesterday with dark energy, the universe will start to expand, therefore we will find redshift and cosmic microwave radiation. So, the existence of redshift and cosmic microwave radiation doesn't prove the Big Bang. It simply proves that the universe is expanding and that this expansion had a beginning, but not necessarily in a singularity and not necessarily to natural mechanism. So, uh, these are just a few examples of incorrect predictions that the Big Bang Theory makes. Uh, so, you said that one is enough to falsify the Big Bang Theory. I presented several wrong predictions. And I'm not expecting you to drop the Big Bang Theory. I mean, I know that you will hold to your theory no matter what. But I think if you are honest, if you are intellectually honest, you will admit that there are good reasons to be a skeptic about the Big Bang Theory. I mean, there are good arguments against the Big Bang Theory, and there are good reasons to be a skeptic again about the Big Bang Theory. So, uh, have a nice day. And by the way, uh, none of my statements are controversial. I mean, every single scientist in the world, or the vast majority of them, agrees that these are real problems that the Big Bang Theory has. And they all agree that these are all incorrect predictions that ha and all scientists admit that they have to invent hypothetical processes and untestable mechanisms to explain these inconsistencies. So none of this is controversial in science, none of my statements are controversial in science. Uh, the only thing that might be controversial is on whether if these incorrect predictions are a big deal or not. In your video, you seem to minimize these problems, like, according to you, I mean, you, you acknowledge these problems, but you seem to, to minimize them, I mean, like, according to you, these problems are very irrelevant, they don't represent a big deal, uh, but I disagree, I mean, I think these are, these are real problems, uh, I mean, these are th this is stuff that goes against uh, scientific laws and scientific knowledge, and, I mean, you cannot just invent variables and mechanisms to make them fit to your, to your theory and expect everybody to accept them. I mean, it's okay to propose hypotheses, it's okay to propose things like antimatter is somewhere in the universe, but you cannot expect everybody to accept your hypothesis. And you have to accept that those hypotheses are worthy of skepticism. Uh, so uh, have a nice day and thank you for your time.